transnational in corporate social responsibility. Please keep team to with us. And uh, I'd like to give you a little background about the company and to get himself. Um, Miner is in 26 countries around the world, and um, their brands include everything from the hotels that we know, the Four Seasons, Bangkok, St. Regis, Next Door, and Antara, um, all over Thailand. And their, their food businesses include the Pizza Company, Swenson's, Sizzler, and the clothing brands, um, uh, for example, Esprit, The Gap, and, and Tuli. The Bag, yes, yes, they, they take care of many, many brands in Thailand. And um, uh, they are one of Asia's largest companies, um, and they're in, in uh, so many different businesses. And that makes it very important um, for uh, such a huge conglomerate to have a very good CSR uh, strategy and program. And Kutsukit is actually the founder of the CSR club at the Stock Exchange of Thailand. Um, so without further ado, <coughs> I would like to introduce Kutsukit Kutsukit to the stage. Please give him a warm welcome. Is it work? Okay. Thank you for inviting me to the class. I usually an audience, not a speaker. So if I do something wrong, I apologize for my mistake. Uh, today I will tell the story of minor CSR. I think for it is a case of high company that become an international company. And we have journey from a long time CSR begin with philanthropy to now the strategy and sustainability things. So I can tell you some story of, of my journey. Uh, most of people when they said my they might not uh, realize that there are a lot of brands that related to this is all our brand. We have three pieces. Five. One is food. When, when you see food, if you are hungry, you start 11, 12, and we have pizza, when you say sister, and we add more. In other countries, we have the other name. In hotel, we have another our brand, Avani, and we have other, other like old seasons, and we use all and many things. And fashion for the lady we have is very sad in the and a lot of things. So imagine when you do a corporate social responsibility in a broad uh, of, of branding and with, how can how can you do it? Are there something similar? Are there something that can link all the brand and all the business, different business together? Before you do that, we are a Thai company, but we are in 26 countries. We are have 100, now it's 103 now, 120 something hotel. Uh, and we have 1,500 food store, 20, 270 something fashion outlet. So when we do business, we have a business food print. And we make money, and we make profit, we get business running. At the same time, we are thinking of our community and environment footprint. So everywhere we go, we have to consider the community and, and social footprint also. This is what the business people and CSR people working together to, to see the impact and some good impact value type of the the move of the business. This is how the, the story begins. Any time you have read the book or entrepreneur, the entrepreneur, and have you seen it? This is a, a great book for management. With the real real experience. It's not something you might teach in the class like the pizza wall. Maybe we can the pizza hunt several years ago and then we were very successful and the US brand take it away from us how can we fight and set up the pizza company and now when we set up pizza company the US company said oh, 
my day is not in the map. My day cannot do, cannot do it because we are just a small Thai company. They cannot do international service like like Visa. So we begin the Visa company, and now you see what is the market share of the Visa company and Visa. So this is a story of management by practice, not a theory, not much theory on that, but you can dig some theory on on every chapter. You can some chapter said we are fighting with some format set for support testing. How can you be? And how much effort we use in people. You know, and a lot of things are, are in that. If you want to buy it, you can buy it. And proceed, go to some of the foundation and we help students in education. And we have in several languages. It might be a good book to study. But in that book, what I like most is the, the final chapter that Yunil said. He one final quality that marks that mark the successful entrepreneur is ability to give feedback. It's not how rich you are, but how much you can give back. Give back is doesn't need donation, but something that you can save the world and you know. The thing is the society is like a forest. If you want to continue, it won't be continue to forest if you don't retain it what you take out. So in business, when you take something out, you have to restore it back systematically during you to do business. Not doing a lot of things, destroy everything and give some small money back for donation is not the way to do. So in the last chapter it's very, very interesting. They said today we have bigger house but broken home. We can go to the moon, but we can we cannot go across the street to other day, you know, our neighbor to talk. What will happen? If you get rich, you just just eat this amount of food. You just live on some small space. How can you share things that you have with others? This is the, the beginning of CSR in my life. Ten years ago when I uh, got in the company, could be are thinking of something that the company can do for the social and for the community. And we are thinking, it's not, we are not thinking of projects that we do, but we are thinking of all the business process that can give value to community and environment. So what it is, miner is good, very good company in making profit, expand. But when CSR getting in, we said we have to change the way we do business. If not, we get the business we must sustain. So we have to take care of the environment, the planet, and also the, the community. The difference between other company and, and minor is something in the middle. We have passion. We have passion in everything we do in minor. If you see the brand, all the brand that, that we sell, we can with our executive like it and love it and sometimes we partner with it. So we, we work with the thing we like, with passion. So it's, the world is not like work. It's a, like a hobby you can play, you can enjoy. It. You can work with it with, with passion. So everything my nerves do is with a passion. So some of the other of the white ocean strategy use this in the night and delta use this as a main movement of white ocean strategy. But in the middle, they said ISR, individual social responsibility. Imagine the company is composed with people. If all the people have passion in triple bottom line, the world will not like this. You see, how can we do it? So I write some book called CSR DNA. And I used to do a video, a series of videos of several companies to do good things called CSR. We can do it something like that. Long time ago. <laughs> really long when I was young. <laughs> it's long time ago. It's a funny story about that. But you see, this is the key of, of my own thing. This is a passion. When I'm getting in, when CSR are getting in, the slogan of my own is 100% customer satisfaction. This is how we build the business. But when CSR are getting in, the company changed the, the philosophy to 
100% stakeholder satisfaction. That means we can be confused who should be served, who should be taking care. So we have to engage all stakeholders and listen to their expectations. Different stakeholders have this different satisfaction. Shareholders might need a buy of uh, dividends and long-term <coughs> increase of share value. Or employee needs some, some space. Even employee, they change a lot because at our time is a baby boomer habit. Now it's Gen X and Gen Y, which habit is changed. So how can we do it? Customer <coughs> need and require more. Partner, franchise, supplier, they all need something from, from the company. So CSR is not a job of a CSR manager, but it's a job of all the company. Because, for example, if the employee, the HR department, are the one who, who running that kind of CSR job, customer might be marketing brand management doing that kind of work. Partner, maybe supply chain, franchise, doing that thing. Community, maybe CSR and, and external relations do. And shareholder may be high now. But they have to integrate and synchronize all the things. That's why we call strategic CSR. CSR is like an iceberg. In media, in public, they just only see the tips of the iceberg, which is philanthropy giving big shape. Media for CSR is a, you know, something donate, donation, philanthropy. But in minor, we begin with the fundamental with this rule, regulation, law, standard. And the industry standard is somehow is better than the, the law. Because sometimes the law is writing and then it be there, it's not proof. But this is standard. There are new standard, ISO, new ISO coming up every day. So we have to compete with them. Most people don't understand this is also corporate social responsibility. This is some development of corporate social responsibility. Engagement, volunteer, that is something we do. So at my level, we focus on what we call in process CSR more than the after process, which is philanthropy and, and donation. But somehow we go together. Where should we begin? At CSR, we begin from inside. I remember one day when I get in, some of, one of my factory manager asked me to find some school to, uh, to restore and help the school. I said, where do you want? Me to select the school. They said in Rayong. I'm just wondering why Rayong there. The ice cream factory is in Salahuli. I just realized that they want to go to the sea. <laughs> because they are in the mountain. So I, I asked the factory manager, how often do you go to, to the school and do you visit? Just only one. One time is not. It's not. So I said, why don't you survey the school near the, near the factory? And we found out that 50% of our employees graduate from that school. Maybe 20% of our kids still live, you know, study in that school. But the school is very low quality. That's why don't we begin changing the school in, in the area. That's why we said we begin from inside out, go often. We don't need a huge money and do one, one day a big volunteer and get out. But we still add on a lot of things continuously. So it is good for us that we have return of investment to, to ourselves, something like that. If we can do it, that next time we go on a big, bigger area. This is how minor people are. They have passion and everything they do, and they enjoy. We, we work maybe more than 50 hours a day. Some people don't stop at the end. But when we call for volunteer, they are excited to do that thing. And we, we need a kind of, of that people. And when I begin, I fail. Because most of our executive, they don't really understand about this kind of thing. 
because I have one period if you remember your teacher. So you remember at some period of time, university don't teach students to do volunteer job and community service. I remember when I got to the business school, the first class of my, my class they call Golden Tarachu. They invite the very rich executive that graduated from the, the school and said if you want to be like him, just learn to be you know, in this school and think about profit. And if the company fails, we go to another company because you are asset, something like that. Instead of thinking of if they have power to be C level, to be CEO, how can you change the world by doing good things? That's why they have failed. If you remember several years ago when the US had Europe had failed in economy, and some of the automobile CEO go to Washington and ask for, for help. <laughs> and I think that uh, how you come to Washington, everyone go to private jet. By private jet, and they ask for help. Japanese do different things. They cut their salary in half. They try to save. They try to rely on themselves first before asking for for other. That's why I think teaching in the management school about culture of responsibility is, is very important, especially in generation Y. We did a survey and they said, my dad, dad job is their life. So if you teach the student in the school to help, you know, from this service volunteer, and when they get out, they look at the company that have a lot of activity and to be a good company. Which is, this is some chance that uh, business people at university or, or it can, can work together for that type of, you know, they want to have it, you know, public social responsibility. If you know, they also have a book in the university called University Social Responsibility. They begin talking, that's uh, what we know, because you are in <laughs> some of the group that try to, but very difficult. I don't know why academic people somehow <laughs> very difficult to get together, but you are the key. Because after that, you send all your product to the, the company. If you, the product is not 100% social responsible mindset, setting if you create a lot of problems. And when the people talk about what is your key corporate social responsibility, we think that we talk within our family, what is our main corporate social responsibility? What are we? We are not the Korean company who destroy, we use a lot of natural resources and have to push them back. We are a service company and we are people company. The thing we we use is a people, human capital. If we can, you know, invest in social capital of the country, that will be good for us. Good for employee, good for the future, a lot of things. So most of our, our CSR program invest in human capital development. And we have a map. For example, this is within a company. How can we train? our staff because they don't have that kind of chip set from the university. So we have some kind of sustainable leadership program in our company. At this level we work a lot with the vocation school. Because sometimes the vocation school don't have a real practical, they have knowledge, but they never practice in hotel or in shop. So we partnering with hundreds of vocational college <coughs> like a work integrated learning and keep when, when they learn they can have a salary right away and then when they graduate they have a job. Imagine how many of the students graduate every year and they lose the job. Because now if you have a partial degree, cannot do anything, how can the company recruit them within fifty thousand by a month or something like that? Doing nothing. So this is a thing that vocational study might be. Or even if, if regular university today, they are trying to work with business to do a real internship program. Prepare the student to be work ready as well. <coughs> And this is very far away from our business that we still do to the school, the post school, because this is fundamental. Okay. I will show you some frames of the program. 
This is some. Somehow when you do something, you have to create some kind of behavior. This is what we call the minor father state. For my boss to do and he every year he has a birthday and everyone really is present. He has a lot of things. And you, you have a lot of father is you not use it. A lot of present you not use it. A lot of cake that he cannot eat because it is more fat. So we have a team like that. Ten years ago, we don't give him present. We ask for a company holiday. One day, everyone not working, go out to do something for the community, give him to be a present. So we we did some small project at that time. Today, our, we have 50,000 employees. At that day, in every country, 26 country, every community, we get out and do something for the community, mostly for the school, for children. So this is, we begin building culture. This is part of the culture. And this is our, this year program we go to the school. After we build the school, we don't leave the school. We should do more campaign on that. For example, we also raise funds for English for kids. Because if, if you notice, some survey within 50 something country, we are in, I think 58 country, we are 57. Ranking for English, it's crazy. So, this is the kind of thing that your student can help the way you know, teaching in the school because English is very really important and then now Chinese and Arab also. So we begin doing this kind of training program. Sometimes we partner with university. In university they have a, like a, uh, what do you call it? Some, some CSR club, some volunteer club in university. Sometimes we work together in, in some area. And we know the student and the student know the, the company culture and then we can you know, seeking before they, they graduate. This is the thing that we work with the vocational school. We work with a hundred of the vocational school and we provide job opportunity. Thai people, Thai students don't want to learn <coughs> in the vocational college because they think they are second class. They want to go to the university. But today, the employer, company, we love the student from vocation because they can do a lot of things. I used to tell the student from Tulano Court. I am also graduate from Tulano Court. <laughs> but you see what the Tulano Court students do in the Saturday evening. They have a sport class <laughs> and also they play golf. We <laughs> <laughs> ask them to work with the government market. <laughs> so sometimes the world is changed. So, how can we make the, the happy of our students as a business plan, as an entrepreneur? This is our event program. Uh, the industry uh, council uh, challenged us to change, you know, the vocational students. They, they hit each other, they do some violent things, they do a content type they plan. You know the class? <laughs> How can we change that behavior? So we work with the, the soldier to train them, you know, the discipline and send them to, to our store. Instead of doing internship in third year and fourth year, we, we begin internship in second year to change behavior at the very beginning. This is one of our pilot. They, you know, sometimes we are afraid because you see, if, if they're angry and they hit our customer, <laughs> the thing is we have to have a mentor, 24 hour mentor, helping them, checking their are you at home yet, uh, what are you doing, so it's like our, uh, our daughter and our son. But it proved within one year, one of the school, the teacher, they, they change behavior and they became the leader of the next generation of that school. So this is something that, you see, this kind of CSR, we use effort, we use our employability, we use our mentor to help to change the social problem instead of giving money and we check, do some PR and get it out. This is not a very important tool. This is the thing that I told you that our executive don't learn sustainability and, and CSR in the college and university. When we talk to them, it's very difficult. So we 
innovative program for sustainable leadership. So if this is some kind of example. They have to create their own sustainable program that related to their work. For example, some of the supply chain might think, think of sustainable seafood, working with supply chain to save the fishery and change the fishery, something like that. Or even HR people thinking of corporate university. And some of the marketing be thinking about book up campaign that they maybe come and make it better. Then we come up with, with something and top executive and, and we have uh, the panel, the fiscal team that sometimes we bring it from the profession from outside to, to work with them. And we believe this is a company DNA. If they know when they come up to be VP, to be senior, and they know and they really understand because they have to hand on. It might have, we believe we have to do hand on. Okay. Really, really exciting when they do this kind of thing because we know that actually we think we are very smart people. We jump to solution, but working in the sustainable issue, you cannot. Let it jump to the solution. You have to talk. You have to listen. You have to really understand the cause of, of, of social problem, which is not the way my do. My jumping in, doing things, and learn from learn from doing. But in this case, we try to change that behavior mindset. Sometimes not change our staff. We change our customer. If you go to a hotel in some day, we do a earth hour. We educate. First, we educate our staff about the importance of energy in first time. And we educate our guests to sign in and do some. And we prepare candlelight dinner with very really special ties, very really expensive ones. We can also we get romantic food. And you remember, if the world don't have related to what, what will happen. And also, our fashion how they do. If you buy some shoes or something that you will have a kind of special rate or even special gift of that. This is a kind of thing that if a second or brand manager understand they can they can take this kind of thing and benefit the product itself. And this is we have several CSR uh, uh, things. I cannot tell you all the things but this is a great source of, of everything. For example, you see this one, the, 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 the glass bottle. In Maldives, we have to carry plastic bottle from land to a very beautiful island and then throw it away. Imagine everyone when you go to Maldives, a lot of new water getting in, how many bottles you throw it away. So we we been doing a machine that changed the sea water to do a pure water, sparking it, mm -hmm. and we, we keep doing it. We can, but we have to convince the executive how, how expensive it is. But the bottom line is not just profit, but there are other things more than profit. So your student, if they learn, they have to have a, a talent to convince. Financial thinking is not only, only you know, selling idea, but return on investment, not only one, one bottom line, but maybe so when we do it, we said it's possible. So we look at other hotels in our brand. Four or five years ago, most of the hotels provide two plastic bottles in each room. So we begin dialogue with other leading hotels in, in, in Bangkok and try to change to be a glass bottle. Now, in fast time hotel, if you check in, in they are glass bottle recycled already. It's an idea of one or two or three people sitting down in this room and try to change. But it's not easy because the guests sometimes complain. Because they want to carry a plastic bottle, bring it and throw it away. Because we, we don't teach our society about sustainable consumer. And also some some men are complaining that they, are, they handle the, the glass bottle harder than the plastic bottle. But sometimes, they, they get family with it, it's okay. It used to have effort to grab it. This is what I told like that. This is one of the most beautiful uh, reservoirs 
in Peru. Um, the water treatment, you see in Thailand, some of us, someone said that. In, in Hodi, if you know, they don't have a river in Hodi. They don't have a big reservoir. They have seven golf course, a lot of hotel, and a lot of condominium. If everyone go to it at the same time, they will not have water enough to feed everyone. So several years ago, we began to use the recycled water program. But most of recycled water, the imagine of, of something that not very beautiful. But our designer designed the lily pond, there's a bar outside, sometimes they have a movie. At that time, we can do it, we can imagine architect can, can design. So it's a kind of thing that gray water can use in our hotel because our hotel have a lot of trees. If we use white water every time, it will be very expensive and it will be, you know, completely other for, for limited water resource. So this is why the thing we have to have put in the day of every executive. If every hotel, every condominium manager, if the top part of it doing, we will save a lot of cost. Yes. In Anantara, in four seasons, in Cap North, we do agriculture. We do uh, what we call uh, culture fields, so, so our guests can have some experience with that. And we that of all, uh, teach me to do carbon footprint. So we said that every, eighty percent of our, every ingredient on food should be within around ten miles or something from, from the hotel. If not, you can you have to carry a lot of it. So this is save a lot of carbon footprint on that, and it's also organic food. And we, we train our guests to do a kind of cooking of the organic food when they get back home. They can do something within their small garden in their home. So if this is experience. If, because we don't think we, we sell the room, but we sell experience that they can use to change the world. And as I told you, next next week we will have an elephant photo that try to raise fight to, to help elephant. If you have, um, I think, 28 to 31st, we have a uh, different photo and we ask for come. You will come to, to see it and donate to help elephant. Last year, elephant photo, we do some innovative electrical tuk tuk. We use the solar panel charged to the tuk tuk. And if it works, we can use this solar tuk tuk to all Anantara Hotel. So, this, you know, a couple of management thinking. Sometimes I have very hard time pushing CEO, CEO, and it's never moved. And one day it's moved. And I'm wondering why it's moved. So I go to the CEO and why do you do the thing like this? What they said to me is, I'm Canadian. My old school habit. They said that because in, in Canada, I think they teach a kind of environment, you know, reservation in the school. So that is a, a habit. So the thing that you learn from the university, the school, will reflect in work and it's a habit. If not, I have to change a lot of things during the working time. We have separated a lot of cabbage, okay? but we have to work out with the, the governor to, to, you know, to, to have a separate pickup too. If not, they just put everything in one track. They, they, they have more problems on, on this kind of thing. So, so we, every, uh, in, in Phuket, we have a total foundation. If we can meet and we, we build the, the hotel, the turtle gone from the beach, my car beach, and then why they are gone. It's not related to us, but check with the academic, they said it's related to us, because we have some lighting, and the turtle is gone. So we just need the light and help in the community, and we can reserve the hotel. This is up to the end. Everything I did is according to the CSR strategy. In minor, we don't rush into CSR strategy. We use a CSR strategy to educate executive. We use we use it as a two-year educate, talking about stakeholder that related to to him, talking about future. If they don't doing, we have to 
go to every department to make them really understand about the effect to the to the stakeholder, and then we set up the strategy. In the middle is a core value of the, the company. So each company we have a different of this strategy. But when you have strategy, it is easy for sustainable because this is every time we have board meeting, this will be the first page that board follow. And you know what is the target monitoring evolution. <coughs> so this is the thing that we, we do. In Thai, some of you might, might know uh, sufficiency economy of the king. In English, we have strategy, but in Thai, some of our strategy related to sufficiency economy of the king, but I don't have time to explain all, but every time we do, it's similar. CSI is quite similar to sufficiency economy of the king. We are not working alone. We work with the CSR club and the stock exchange have to move. You know, a small company cannot do it and change it alone. So we have to buy like my partner. At CSR club, we have our listed company working for the bigger issue. In ASEAN, we have CSR, CSR ASEAN network working in the ASEAN. University, we have USR University Social Responsibility Network, which work together. There are more of this kind of network. If we want to change, this is a kind of thing that we have to do. During the year, we got some of the award, CSR award, uh, that said minor is in the standard of, of CSR. We are pioneering some of the things. But we are not doing philanthropy. We do in process CSR and sustainability things. You can read more in our sustainable report in the website. I cannot tell you all about the details. This is sustainable report on our website. Every major company in stock exchange they have says that an SD report, which we can use that. So it's, it's the end of now. I think the short story of mine can can give you some idea of of high company journey to CSA and sustainability. You mentioned that, uh, right at the end there that uh, every company on the Thai Stock Exchange uh, creates one of these reports. Is, is that a, re a requirement of the Stock Exchange or is that just come to be best practice? I think it's not a, a requirement, but uh, we encourage the company to do because if they don't do, they, they don't know the story, they don't understand themselves. So this is a kind of, you know, encourage them to do. When they do, they ah, you don't have strategy. We don't have function, we don't have structure. And somehow we are rating them so they can have improvement on them. It's the way the stock is taken right. encourage them and repair them because some of the company might go to ESI and they need a lot of information on them. Wow. And now it's not only stock exchange, it's now SCC, the volatile, we try to force us to disclose the information on them. That is good for other stakeholders to see. The real, you know, the real impact. Thanks. I, I enjoyed your, your remarks very much, and I'm wondering uh, about your approach to developing people. Whether um, for your underlying companies, is that a competitive advantage that the sustainability policies you have, educating uh, and and uh, providing. Um, Kind of a social infrastructure for your employees is that a competitive hiring advantage and if so is that promoting other uh, companies in corporate thailand to adopt the same policies as a form of competition with your underlying companies is it is it a virtuous cycle that is developing as a result of that so um, are you uh, are you seeing other companies in Thailand adopting the same policies because it's a competitive advantage in hiring? Mm -hmm. um, I think they did because of several reasons. One one might be the same thing about hiring about the 
but most <coughs> of them in the uh, CSR part of stock exchange, we have a slogan, Connect for Sharing. We sharing best practice and everything. Sometimes I learn from our colleague in something. Our colleague learn. So every year we have a learning process. And we believe that get together and learning. Sometimes we do a, a lot of mistakes in something and we have mistake also. Sometimes we jumping too fast and doing bad things. For example, we have the experience going too fast, giving the complete money. Sometimes they make them weaker than it should be. Then how can we strengthen them by not giving them all the things that help them help themselves what what is that? So it's a learning and every each company has different ways of learning. But we still learn. It needs some academic view on, on that side too. What skills are you requiring to, to when you hire somebody? Whether it's coming from the vocational training side or from the higher education side, what, what, what skills do you want from these possible uh, employees? Uh, for employer, uh, actually in, in the job. When you hire. Yeah. In, in, they have uh, several tasks on that. Mostly in the job is operation. That's why vocational school. They have a skill on that. They have training. We have other, you know, on the on the job training on that. We need a skill. But in management, we need other skill, knowledge. So some some of our staff that graduate from vocational school is good to be a employee at the you know restaurant level. But they have lack of talent that they go to to manager of, of the job. So we, we send them. Sometimes we're working with the university to get them some further study on. Yeah, that, that, that's my my deeper question. What would you recommend for us to teach to possible uh, employees of mine? Uh, I know Bill Heineke quite well, and I know he's a pretty tough guy. So what do you need to know to survive inside mine? Mm -hmm. Inside, this is one. And, and succeed. Survive and succeed. Mm -hmm. Actually, I got another video, but I didn't bring it today. In my head, is entrepreneurship. We have a, a movie. It called every employee movie of uh, Sylvester Stone, Rock Rocky. They said it's not how hard you can hit, it's how hard you can hit and return. So entrepreneurship, competitiveness, you know, some the fighting, the passion. So how can we train entrepreneurship in, in the school? Competitiveness, passion. I'm not so sure it's, it's relevant to, to the cost, because most of the you know, training, the academy, the theory, but entrepreneurship, leadership, fighting, something like that. You need, in mind, you need that kind of, of things. Sometimes you have to learn from, from experience. <coughs> Yeah, someone was speaking about <coughs> profit. Indeed, in uh, a competitive market models, especially the Michael Porter competitive uh, strategic model, speak primarily about profit. It's really all about profit. You try to <coughs> find things to provide your customer, do it the best you can, have a good relation with your suppliers, make sure you understand competition, and also make sure what uh, you also have a barrier to you know, achieve the invitations and things like that. So we do teach our students to evaluate companies based on site models. But the fact is what you have is what we need to probably start earlier and deeper and probably the lesson I'm taking from your presentation is to for students to also look at the environmental aspect, the social responsibility aspect, and make that part of the projects. When they are doing project analysis of companies, they have to look at it, and I think one of them probably is to even have it in the mission statement of the companies. I think that's probably the place 
where students with like an Indian student with the knowledge of it be able to grow and have that aspect of everything they do. So I wonder if you have any comments. I think if you want to evaluate it, see if you teach your student to see the company, don't see only profit. That's why I mean, if you assign your student to look at the report, don't see only one annual report, income, asset. I think that's the one part that they should learn. But they have other intangible number. But how can you teach them to, to read intangible figure? How can they learn and they convince and they grow up, they convince the company to to change because if you just only measuring everything in the number, this kind of program will not. But how can we teach them more, and they have some some talent to convince? Because if you put some some something can calculate the number, but it's not it's not a regular calculation, <laughs> financial sheet. It has to be the mission statement. From the company point of view, and we have to again in student mind as where we want our company not only has a mission statement for profit, but a mission statement for the society it lives in and the people who live in environment survive it. So you can see some of the company have, but it's a PR thing sometimes. <laughs> they don't they do profit, but they are some PR agency to write some good thing in that statement. But statement is just statement. What we try to do sometimes we don't try, but we train, we force, we do a lot of program to, to, to make it, you know, our employees thinking like that. So it's, it's a thin line between advertising and real vision and mission. So it's a like comedy DNA and culture. So you can, if the student can evaluate and analyze the company, real, culture and, and intention to be very good. Thank you very much, Kat. So on behalf of the uh, SASIN Center for Sustainability Management and, and all of SASIN and in fact my health professional chapter, I'd like to thank Kunsiki very much for this very interesting talk. Um, I've always been interested um, by, by Bill Haneke's uh, intriguing story. And I don't know if you know uh, the story behind the name Miner. He started the company as a miner <laughs> when he was a teenager. And looking at your presentation, I, I don't know if I'm getting into his head, but Mint, the, the aggregation, the, the stock on the stock exchange of uh, uh, Miner International, Mint is like, it's where you make a lot of money. <laughs> so, and a lot of values too. So it's, it's very nice to see this, this wonderful story played out today. So many, many things happen to get cut.